Yeah, welcome back to the program. And uh, this is News Desk. We'll move on to a second issue of the day where the National Identification Authority, uh, you may already know, was set up in 2003 under the office of the president with a mandate to issue national ID cards and manage uh, the national identification system. Uh, this morning we gather, in fact, uh, Betha Jebler, who is Public Affairs Director, who is here with me in the studio, has confirmed that uh, mass registration uh, nationwide has ended. That's why we'll begin the conversation uh, around the, the Ghana card. Thank you very much, Betha, for joining us in the studio. Thank you, too. Uh, mass registration has ended. W really, what does this mean for the process? It, it, it means that we set out to register people across the country to collect initial data to set up the system. Originally, we are scheduled to complete this within nine months. Unfortunately, we couldn't meet the timelines, but uh, happily, we are, we are able to finish that uh, last year, around September. And so we have gone through all the 10 regions and collected data to populate the system. The mass registration was not intended to cover everybody. We just had to collect some data to set up the system, and we have a national coverage of that data collection. Mm. So that's what it means. Now we have data on people from all the regions in all the communities in every region. We set out to collect maybe 50% of the population, but we think we, we know we have done more than that. Um, there, were, there are variations in regional coverage, but um, we have done more than the 50% that we estimated to do um, from the beginning. Mm, so the registration is over. Now what? It means that we, we, we have about a, a data um, base that is over 15 million. And out of the 25 million uh, people that we have in the country, mm. um, we are registering people six years and above. So it means that we have a lot of the people that should be registered in the system. Now, we people are not covered. It's not everybody that's covered. So we have the duty to continue the registration. So we call that the continuous registration phase. And that's where we are now. We have our regional office in a few of the regions. We have Greater Accra. We have uh, Ashanti. Um, Bronga Hafu and Tam, um, Northern Region. Mm -hmm. So people in those regions can access registration right now any day. The other regions, we are going to uh, open our regional offices. Indeed, we have to open even zonal or district offices mm -hmm. where we bring the registration as close as possible to people. Our officers may be doing outreach to communities and get them registered. Um, so that's where we have to move to quickly and get the other people to, to register. What we also intend doing is to use the card distribution, which we are planning. Um, when we send a card, we use it to do the mop-up um, of people who haven't registered during the mass registration exercise. When is the card distribution starting? We did start 2011 mm. in Greater Accra, and I want to say that we produce cars for Greater Accra and some of the districts in Ashanti region. We don't have cars for any other region for uh, very, some challenges that we faced. And so Greater Accra, we started 2011. We got some of the cars out. Um, we still have a lot uh, still not distributed. Last year, we tried um, uh, using a different strategy of not doing the mass distribution, but clustering centers and then taking the cars, making some community announcements, and then people within those communities go for their cars. Then the team moves on to another part of the district. Those were in districts that we didn't cover under the mass distribution exercise. And that has helped us to distribute almost 285,000 cars. Out of the 15 million persons no, you have registered? We, no. We registered people in Greater Accra and produced cars about 2.5 million. Mm. When we did the mass distribution and some continuous distribution, we got about 700,000. And then we expanded that last year, as I said, from mm. July. It trickled, and, 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 and within by October, we, we expanded it a little, and we were able to distribute 285,000. So in all, we've, we've done about almost 1 million cars out for Greater Accra, but we still have a substantial uh, number Absolutely. of cars, 1.5 million cars still sitting there. You take the cars to the communities, the cars are returned. People don't pick them up. So that's the challenge we mm. have to... But can, can you blame them? Because it, it, it took quite a while for yes. the cars to come. Yes. Uh, the, the, the chits that were given yes. them to, yes. you know, come for their cars mm. at the appropriate time. 
many would have lost them. I, yes, and so we were not demanding the, the, the people to produce it before your card is given to you. Mm. Actually, you are going to authenticate the card again. So when you come, any ID card that you produce to show you are who you say you are, and we just want to establish with that slip that you registered at that particular center. So even if you're not holding it, you go through the cards. When they find your card, you authenticate it. If the um, fingerprint, the prints that are stored in the car match with your live fingerprint taken, then it's your card is given to you. If there's no match, your picture could be on it and you don't get your ID card. But it makes the process longer. Yes, it does. But if we don't ensure that your, your prints are the same, mm -hmm. then you cannot use the, the card in future because any time you have to use the card, it will be authenticated. Mm -hmm. so, uh, is it the same for those who may have, you know, involved in fresh registrations? What, what, what we have to do, those who are going to be mm. doing the registration going forward, we are trying to use the same system that we're using for the foreigners' registration that they pay $120 uh, that they get their cards on the spot, instant issuance. We want to introduce that for our Ghanaian people who are um, anxious to have their cards at a, a small fee that covers just the cost of delivering that service to them because still the cards for Ghanaians mm. that, that, free. That's the, the, the charge is when I want an instant card, probably I come to your office and I want an yes. instant or card. Yes, or we will be expanding it to various places. It's not just our, our office. We may be in banks and other places that will announce to the public to know where we are. So that when you get there and you, you want it, within 10 minutes, your card is printed and you are leaving with your card. So it comes at a cost because it's a public-private partnership mm. where a private person is, is the one uh, bringing up the capital, investing in the equipment and the technology. And so we charge some fee to, for him to cover that cost but still make it very, very affordable for our Ghanaian people. Mm. I, I understand a bit of the public-private partnership, but uh, let, let, let's, let's look at uh, other cuts we've also have had to go for. They, they were instant and there were no payments. And, and here we are, we have to pay because we want an instant card. Um, and, uh, if we talk about, I don't know which one, there may be the the um, elect electoral commission cards when we did our registration to get our voters ID card. When you look at the mm. card that we are issuing, how, I'm, how not, I'm not mm. downgrading any way anybody's card, mm. but what goes into this is a security card and all of the things that go, the features and everything, and the cost that goes into it. Government originally decided to pick that up. We have a problem with that system. We are, we, are, we are fixing that problem. So that's why all the places that we've done the registration so far, we've not been able to go back. And that is also at a greater cost. And technology has actually changed. It evolved, and now we have the opportunity to do this instant insurance. And um, we need to support government in its work. So instead of going back to government, go and buy this equipment for us mm. to uh, be able to do instant issuance, mm. which may take longer if we do this public-private partnership, which government itself is now uh, uh, championing. We think that is the way forward. And I want to say that the National Identification Authority is the first public-private partnership uh, uh, program that has been signed under the PPP program government has brought mm. on board. But you do agree with me you would experience a lot of challenges when it comes to you know, persons having to pay for instant cuts. You, you, yes, we will do. What do you I, see happening? We will do, but I would rather... I will also tell you the numbers of people who are really willing to pay some money to just get their cards instead of maybe waiting for so long and they, they need mm. their ID card. Several people are, are just tired waiting for the, the, the card that they've registered for because if we, we are matching the two systems. Even if you previously registered and your card is not delivered and we mm. start this instant issuance and you walk to any of our places, we will be um, able to register, capture your, uh, your, your data, and uh, maybe bring the, the old one up mm. and then do an upgrade because mm. this one takes the 10 fingerprints. And we have to be account compliant. Um, they, they've moved from the four fingerprints to the 10 fingerprints. That's the international, international standard now. So we need to move with the time. And that's why we are bringing all of these innovations. How much will the instant process cost us? 
I think we're looking at 25 Ghana cities. Um, I, I think that we, our board will have to um, um, approve that, but that's, that's, I think that's what we're looking at. Is, is that not on the high side? Um, if the, the foreigners are paying $120 for that service. Because that they are foreigners. What, no, not really, because that is the cost. So mm. even with this one, there's still some subsidy or subsidization on the issuance of this instant card to Ghanaians, I, I, I can assure you. I see. Uh, you, t you, t you tell us, you know, people are anxious to get the uh, Ghana cards. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know that, that we have the, the, the national passport, we have the voter ID, which are also acceptable forms. Uh, the Ghana card, what, what purpose does it serve? The, the cards that you mentioned mm -hmm. are institutional cards specific to the mandate of those institutions. Mm. National Health Insurance Card is to allow you to access health service. Right. Voter's ID card is to identify you as a voter for you to vote. But there had been a vacuum where there was no national ID card. And so all these cards were used as national ID cards or cards that were acceptable because they are publicly issued cards. So there was that respect for them and people accepted them. Now we have a Ghana card a national ID card. All of these institutions are to quote your personal identification number from the national ID card on their card because we want to identify people by who they are across all sectors. And mm. so if you have your number with national uh, health insurance, the same number with your passport, with your driver's license, you are the same person across all these sectors. Mm. Now people have multiple identities. You can use one for your national health insurance, use another mm. one for passport, and so on. But with this system, if they all take, and they are required by law to do so, mm. if they take your personal identification number on the system, you are the same person all through. You cannot have multiple identity. We eliminate as best as we can the the multiple the identity in the system. D does that position the Ghana card as perhaps the, the sole identi form of identification a a after the distribution is complete? Yes. In fact, the law has already been passed that mm -hmm. the Ghana card is the only card that should be demanded in any transaction that requires identification and and our regulation uh, um, to uh, li2111 mm. regulation 7 uh, subsection 2 actually says that all institutions that are listed to um, uh, give a service under the national or to use the national identification number must demand the Ghana card before they offer any service mm. to anybody in the public and it is a law uh, passed uh, by parliament right Right. Uh, and so how do non-resident Ghanaians uh, become a part of the process? Well, we are, we are required to register them wherever they are. In fact, some of them were going to take us to court. Um, but we're already struggling completing the, the internal registration and issuance of the card. But this year, we also have it on our program mm. to start uh, uh, working with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs mm. to get a, a, a way of registering our people living abroad. But anybody that comes into the country anytime can walk into our office and get registered. But that's not enough. Mm. We need to go out there. And you know Ghanaians are in almost every country. I'm in sure we are in every country in the world. So it's a huge task and involves um, a lot of, a lot a lot of, of funding. Of and we, the plan is to uh, take the equipment to the, uh, our uh, missions abroad and then train personnel and leave the, the equipment so that they could be registered. We mm. also want to use our, our uh, website for them to provide personal information and then building on that we can go and de take their biometric uh, data. But mm. we still know that some of our people are there who don't really deal with the missions. So we will be using the associations uh, uh, and the churches abroad mm. to also get to some of our people. When are we going to see this rollout? We have it on the plan, and we we beginning the year actually on the plan for twenty fourteen. For twenty fourteen, and now that we beginning the year, mm. we will resume work from tomorrow, mm. and uh, we will seriously start uh, all of all of this, and together mm. with all other plans, new strategies for the card distribution, uh, the revenue generation we're talking about. Mm. We want to 
make NIA a viable institution. Mm. We want to rebrand. NIA has always been in the news for the wrong reason. It is a Absolutely. very, very viable uh, system and good system that can, tra if, if we complete it, it can mm. transform the way we do things in this country mm. and really contribute to the development of this country. Mm. So we, we are committed as, as a, a management team mm. to make sure that NIA succeeds. Mm. Uh, so far, the plan for 2014 seems to involve a lot of funding. Uh, 2013, we saw some funding challenges for yeah. the, the NIA. What's the revenue generation plan? We have um, these uh, foreigners registration ongoing. We get uh, part of, of the, the, the money because we, have, uh, uh, we also do some uh, processing. So we get something from there that could support us. We're hopeful that if we get start the ins instant insurance, whatever we're doing, mm. we can use it to help in other areas, yeah. for instance, to so get... So what's the target revenue we hope to generate from the instant uh, uh, card issuance? Unfortunately, these are not things we've concluded, so I can't I give see. you exact figures, but mm. it, they look good if they can transform into to real, real money. I think mm. that those are some of the things we say we'll meet, when we meet mm. immediately after the mm. break, we're going to tackle. Mm. So I can't give you any figure. But, but how about so far, what we have generated from uh, our, the foreigners? Foreigners registration. Mm. There, it's, there's some, some, some uh, extreme uh, uh, of income, and mm. it, it's coming. I, I, I don't really know the, the figures that we have right now, but you know, we, we even getting uh, some um, license fee from our private partner that they will be paying to us. Mm. So that's already an established uh, uh, income. So mm. we could be using all of such monies in. We, we have to share data with institutions. Mm. And any institution that uses our data is to pay some fee for that data. We are, as part of this year's plan, bringing the verification equipment that we can uh, either issue to the institutions or sell to them and then they pay some fee for, for that and the service or they, they do a subscription. Um, we discuss the details and those will bring some money. Um, we have huge printers. And, and th that can only be done after the distribution is complete? No. We, we can do that some, now. Yes, mm. we, ca we, can, we can. People have their cars already. And but we, we only have 15 million people on the register out of the... Yeah, there are 15 million. Let's say that we have, yes, 15 million people. And, but if not even all of them, we are giving ID cards to. We give people 15 years and above. So it's mm. not even all the 15 million people who have the mm. ID card because we, we, uh, the labor law says people 15 and above can do some work. So we think that the card will be more useful to people uh, from 15 and above. When more money comes, we give up to uh, mm. the six years. And then below six years, we're working with the birth and death registry where they will have to be feeding our system with information. And then when they turn six years, we then go and register them. Because of the fingerprint that we're using, it is well formed at age six. Mm. So that's why we have all of this. So it's, it's a, a, there's a lot of work so, so, to so do. So then we may not even have 15 million people. No people Who with an ID card. With the ID card. Yes, how, how many, you, estimatedly, how many do you think would be given the ID card out of the adult population? Uh, that is the statistics that I have to look at. Mm. Um, a breakdown of mm. the numbers that we have done and then maybe looking at uh, uh, that we can just query the system to get that figure and then I can give you specific figures. I, s I see. Yes. I the, 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 you've given us the rev revenue generation plan. You've given us the action plan uh, as well for 2014. Mm. Uh, it looks as if we would have a problem. We would. I mean, if we're if saying that uh, there would not be a problem, everything is, is um, mm. just going to happen. No, it, it will take a lot of work. These are, we're going to depend on people. You said you want to do registration of Ghanaian's instant insurance, as you said, will have challenges. How many people will be willing to pay for that? Now, we want and, to... And I still think that 25 CDs is on the, is on the house okay, side. Okay, so we will look at it and then maybe we'll take public opinion. Maybe mm. we'll, we'll, we'll pilot and see if people, uh, there's outcry. Mm. Then we go back to the drawing board. Some of the, um, the foreign nationals complain, um, especially our people from the ECOWAS region. Mm. We're looking at it. 
and, and so those are things you start something okay. if there are issues with it you go back to the drawing board to see what it is you can do but since our fees are for instance approved by parliament we need to go back all the time to get that approval to reduce or to increase so mm. but we will we, we 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 look we open we look at things as we progress and and this 25 cities is already gone through parliament or you're yet to lay we, we, we are yet we are yet to, to uh, seek that it's still on the drawing board yes it's, so we're still you're, you're going still, to, to still seek that approval before planning. we start it yes mm. so we we have we have plans as we said we have huge printing machines that we can print even passport we print security documents uh, there are so many people printing ID cards and, and they want um, security ID cards we want to uh, exploit all of that to be able to generate some income mm. to support government in delivering identity service to this country uh, have we fixed dates already for the distribution of, of the cards not not um, exactly um, we were doing that and we we, we, we stopped uh, on the 20th of December so we will um, start uh, on a different level we want to get the cards to people and print cards uh, the system that we have challenges with the the uh, partners are coming, the solution providers are coming on board to, to uh, restart the system, re-engineer and make sure that we can produce the cars um, that we have uh, collected data on and then we can then see how best we can uh, use the cost effective way to get the cars out to people. Yeah, and, so and, the, and the process is you use the same stations at which you re registered them. Or Th that's what we've been doing, but mm. is that cost effective? If we mm. can look at other ways, because that involves a lot of money. Mm. And, and wh you what's been the suggestions of other ways um, of, of um, distributing mm, a card? Maybe outsourcing um, at a fee, for instance, where you can distribute these amounts of, of cards within this period and paid some money. So we, we trained some personnel. We, we're thinking about the posts, uh, post offices that we have in a lot of communities across mm. the country. If we can use their safe system, we can position the cars because we have to first think about the safety of the cars. We want to work with the district assemblies to see what they can use, do for us using their system. Mm. They, they are everywhere. And so if we go through them, maybe we could get the cars there mm. and they can also take uh, uh, position and get people, we train them, and they could get the cars out Within a period of time, they, they, they account for the cars that are, are going out. Mm -hmm. They paid some money. Those are the ideas coming out. Uh, in, in the meantime, uh, the remaining 1.5 million yeah. people from the Greater Accra, Accra, how do they get their cars? We haven't said we won't go back. Um, mm -hmm. If they have the opportunity, <coughs> excuse me, they can come to our office and get their car. Um, but we, we still want to look at, as I mentioned, the district assembly system where we could still use our staff supervising, getting the cars to the various places. We look at it. Is it cost effective moving vehicles, fuel, paying allowances to mm. personnel, going to sit at places to distribute cars where you give maybe a 10 day or two weeks uh, period, people don't turn up, you collect the cars back. So we want to see, we want to, for instance, use SMS system where we can send you uh, SMS to say your card is ready, come and pick it up. A in lot the of future. People, in the future. Mm. People are, a lot of people have uh, uh, these ID cards. And it's just that while we were doing the registration, we haven't collected their numbers, but we can work with the, the telecom industry to see how we can get to people we give by SMS to tell them your card is ready, pick it up. Mm. We want to see if we can use the, the newspapers, publish people's names to mm. say, um, your card is ready, but that is also taking it's it far because why, how many people why read doesn't the data collection include uh, telephone numbers? At the time, at the time, the system was de de designed; it wasn't included. And mm. for us to do that, it means they must now expand the fields already. This, this is the fields have been designed already. So those are the upgrade we are going to do, and we're already working with some uh, 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 companies to 
upgrade the system to get the 10 fingerprints like we're doing right now and we'll be doing with the uh, we're doing with the foreigners registration and those who get the instant card the Ghanaians will be doing we want to use those opportunities to get such information and um, um, the electoral commission needs some information the national health insurance they didn't some information and that's why they go ahead going ahead to do new biometric cards which I would say I'm it's not fighting anybody. It's, it's not necessary. Um, if we have the national ID system completed and we have all of the information that they need, we will, they don't need to do establish new databases all over again. Then the, one of the, the things that coming up, uh, we're working on it, is almost going to cabinet. Um, we bring a credit, a supplier's credit system where we have new uh, um, ID cards that will be given out with cheap technology. And so it will be huge. The, 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 the storage capacity is big enough for NHIA to manage its own data directly from our card, mm -hmm. Electoral Commission can do that so that when one person is holding a card, it's a multi purpose card, you mm -hmm. can use it for many things. But policy must be done for this country and accepted. All the institutions will come on board and support it so that in five mm -hmm. years in Ghana, we save a lot of costs for for the country, we don't have to be going mm. back and, and be, be doing data collection, mm. spending so much money mm. off. Uh, Betha, Betha would, would hold on the conversation uh, for now. When we return, we'll talk about saving costs, and then uh, it, it would include pe 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 personal remuneration as well. So don't go away. Thank you very much for staying on News Desk. Uh, before we uh, went on that break, we were, we were talking to... Uh, Betha Jebler, she's Public Affairs uh, Director at the National Identification Authority. We've been talking about the mass registration and the Ghana card uh, generally, the mass reg registration which ended, and the Ghana card generally. And uh, let's talk about saving costs now. I recall that uh, we, we went through biometric voter registration and then we went through biometric uh, registration also for the there was a pilot for the national health insurance uh, scheme as well we'll put these these three together and and see where where we could have saved cost in in all of these registration because you and i complained a lot about the fact that there was the nia uh biometric registration going on and we had to spend money to do these as well so let's let's talk to better how could the ghana card you know, let's let's put uh, the voter card, the the register would have the biometric register and the Ghana card biometric register. C could we have a synergy? Could could we have used it together? Yes, actually, the law that was passed for national identification listed a number of institutions that will be using our data. Um, when we started, electoral commission was part of of the system, but they said they are a constitutional body; they cannot serve under us. In fact, all these institutions that generate uh, databases uh, serve on our um, board, and because of this synergy we are talking about, mm. and so if our system has been completed. The simple thing that we could be doing in this country is to just take the person's personal identification number, which is unique to the person. The person's prints are reduced to that personal identification. Your biometric data tied to your personal data is reduced to your personal identification number. So if you pick that and put it in any system, it's the same person that you are dealing with. And the, the, the advantage here is that if all of the institutions are coming into one source and taking that data on each individual, mm. we eliminate all of the, the duplicates that we will have in the system. So it's workable only if we all agree and take the personal identification number without going back to do a whole exercise of collecting um, fingerprints because the person's fingerprint is unique to mm -hmm. the person. So if you take it, we do that, we authenticate it at the point of the card collection. If, as I said earlier, if your fingerprint, live fingerprint, doesn't match the one stored on the card, it's not given to you. So when you take it, it means that you've already authenticated your identity. Mm -hmm. And so when you have that card, your personal identification number, and it's taken into any system, it's as good as going to set table and collect another biometric 
uh, uh, data. What is the cost in us? The fact that we've not been able to have a single source for, uh, you know, data. A lot of money, and uh, we are collecting the same data and storing them in the in different databases that cannot communicate mm. because we all go to different uh, technical solution providers and these people are people who has who serve us with closed systems it's so close that even you yourself sometimes it's difficult for you to do anything on it and unless you bring them back on board they don't communicate and so if we all have just been taking the personal identification number we are dealing with just one mm. system but now we have different uh, systems that don't communicate so people can continue to have their multiple identities in the system. Within that system, maybe you can be the same person, you can't be there, uh, be more than one in that particular system, mm. but you can still hold multiple identities in this country mm. one for national identification, one for national health, one for EC, one for passport, one for DVLA, because all of these institutions are collecting biometric data. Now, one serious aspect that frightening some of us, is the security of our biometric data right now. Do we have the facilities to secure the data that all of these institutions are collecting? Mm. NIA has laws that back it, that uh, 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 ensures that we must do the right thing, we must uh, uh, make sure the data we collect is safe. Even getting physical access to officers in the place, you may have to have access before you go. I cannot go to many offices because I don't have access. They must grant me access to go into those places. Even the, the, the system, the computer mm. system, workstations that store these databases, if you are not given the password to it, you can never access it. And there are audit trails to see who went into where at what time. All these things, we are now doing multiple of these in many places. We don't know how our data is stored and how uh, 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 secure they are. If your data is lost today, we can't even tell where the source is because you have multiple mm -hmm. databases. Uh, what could be the danger if we are not able to properly secure our biometric data? Then uh, anybody can steal your biometric data, use your, your, your information, and, and it, it, it's a national security issue. Mm. It is a national mm. security but issue. But is, uh, at some point when you think about this, you, you can't blame them because, I mean, the other institutions yeah. who may have gone into yeah. biometric as well, besides the fact that, uh, you know, Parliament may have given them the go-ahead to do that, the fact that the Electoral Commission has said that it's a constitutional body. The NIA itself also, within 2013, uh, when it started the registration, rather, you know, faced a lot of hitches <laughs> that it, it didn't meet some timelines. Yes. And so it, 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 it was difficult for say the EC to sit back and say I'm waiting for the NIA to finish and then and then we 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 we, we, we source data from them um, here I don't want to go into those kind of details I look as if you're blaming somebody mm. I, I seriously don't want to lay blame mm. but the issue is that we were not able to meet our timelines as you said mm. so at the time they were going to be doing all of these things they 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 needed the data, mm. we didn't have it, so they went ahead. But if we have the resources to go ahead to do another one, then why can't we finish this one? That's the question. Mm. So we need to examine uh, the situation carefully. Um, each institution has its mandate. We have to do what it is. But if as a country we want one system that we, we, we take biometric data from, then indeed we need to look at how we can bring all these institutions together. We've done it. What has been done is done already. Mm. But going forward, we can still look at bringing all of these systems together, try to, to, to have a synergy, and have all of them working mm. as one. I, I just want to leave it there. Mm. Getting to the end of the year 2013, the NIA was in the news of not having paid as personnel in the northern region since July. Yeah. Have you paid them? No. Why? That's the same problem. And, and here, this time, I actually didn't want to lay blames or complain. Um, or we, we ourselves are looking at how we can support ourselves. We have the opportunity. We can do it. Government is, is really strained with, with money and um, looking at the, the 
2013 and the, all the labor agitations and all the problems that government had to go through, I think that, I mean, nobody is, is a stranger in this country to say that government was really, really pushed to the wall. And it is the same government that has to bring out the money for these people to be paid. We are not saying their payment is not important. The government gave us some money. Originally, we were given $4 million. Then we were given 1.470, mm. and the whole uh, re exercise was to cost 6.8 something, 6.9 almost, mm. and we got about 5.9 5 5 something. Huh? Mm. So we still we still have an outstanding of uh, 1.4 mm. to be given. That is where the problem is. Where we would have used that to pay them, and we working with government. There's been goodwill on all the fronts. We we go there, but you must understand what's happening in the system. We have been pleading with the people in the north. We don't have an excuse not to pay them. They mm. worked and they, they, they must be paid. Mm. And we ourselves are, are, are so so unhappy with the situation. But um, it was a difficulty that we have to face. And we, we just continue to plead with them to exercise restraint. Throughout the vacation, we've mm. been sitting down um, put, pulling our heads together Every day we go to the office to look at what we can do. We're mm. working with our so minister and the minister of finance to make sure that we get some money to mm. pay that. So 2014, how much is the NIA getting for the process of distribution mm. and, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and the likes? That's where the beginning of the problem lies. Um, mm. I mean, and it's not only NIA, mm. um, it's all institutions. You do your budget for the year. The budget goes to parliament for approval. And because of how tight the budget is, y y uh, uh, you don't get the total that you asked for. Um, I think we presented a budget of 25 uh, million this, and mm. we, we were, uh, I think, three point something was approved for the authority. So, with that, you know that definitely um, <laughs> the operational money is, is, is not covered yet. So 25 million, and yes. you get 3 million. Yes. How, how does the NIA hope to work with that? That's why we have to ourselves be innovative. If we all want to just sit down... Can you work complain, with that? We can't meet the things we have to do. So that is why we are saying that we appreciate it over the, the years. We realize it's the same trend. You Last year, for instance, we asked for $45 million And we got $2.2 million approved by parliament. Mm. So it's, it's a difficult situation. Government money to get some additional money for us to do some work. So they support us. I mean, people might think government is not supporting NIA. And if you see the budget that was approved for NIA, 2.2. But they managed to give us some money, um, 5 point something, to do the registration in, in the three northern regions. It means we got support. Mm. It's just that the government is stretched. So we need ourselves to see what we can do as an institution instead of just sitting back every day and complaining government has not given us money. What can we do? And we have a system that can help us generate money, support ourselves, even mm. after some years, be able to give money back to government to support uh, the, the infrastructural development of this country. I see. How do you see 2014 for the NIA after all that we've spoken about? We want to look at a new NIA. We want to, to be proactive, mm. not sit back, complain we don't have money. We want to go out there, face the difficulties, the challenges that face us as an institution. Do something for everybody to see that we are making the effort so that government also sees what's happening. All other institutions, if maybe NHI has the funding to go and do biometric registration, and but since the NIA is proactive and doing things, maybe they will support us with part of that money and then we go forward. It's just... Uh, thinking aloud. Mm. But yes, NIA, we, we really want to do new things and we, we're hopeful that things will be okay. By the close of the year, we're hopeful we'll be doing things differently. Many of the people will get their cards. We will ourselves be generating some income to support our operations. Thank you very much, Beth. I will leave our conversation here. Uh, it's, been an, it's been fantastic talking to you this morning. Beth Jable is a public affairs director at the National uh, identification authority. This morning on the program, we've been looking at uh, 
some 80 members of parliament who signed a motion to demand a parliamentary inquiry into the merchant bank for T's deal. And we just wrapped up with uh, Betha Jeble of the National Identification Authority on the fact that, uh, you know, the mass registration exercise is, is ended and the way forward. I'm totally grateful you stayed through uh, the program. My name is Kimini Nyamani Aman. I'll stay alive this year. And uh, thank you very much for watching.